So, Helm, Fairy, Kizzo, and Korone. We are going to get started. We're actually going to start kind of one by one, um, and then we will kind of roll you guys together. So, you, um, you find yourself on a ship sailing uh, kind of north of the Maelstrom in the, the between the Eastern Kingdoms and Kalimdor. Um, and you see a, an odd storm off in the horizon. Um, it, it kind of, it's unnatural, something you've really never seen before. And you, you, know, you live on Azeroth. You see seen infernals rain from the sky and, uh, you know, giant sections of ocean just drain away. So the storm is, it's got a different energy than you've ever seen before. Um, and your, your ship seems to be pulled towards it. What would you uh, like to do? Now, is this a, a, a ship of me or a ship of, like, are there crew? You basically have a, a very small, like, you're on a sloop-style ship, so it's, you know, single mast, single sail, uh, probably Got a it. crew of four, you know, including yourself. Uh, yeah, I mean, so, you know, you know, honestly, I, I'm just going to go with my gut here, and I'm just, you know, it's pulling me into said storm. That looks entertaining. We'll just, you know, go that way and see what happens. Admittedly, you know, my, my big strength is curious, so essentially I'm just going to go investigate anything that ever happens, so All we're right. not actually... As you get closer, you notice what appears to be a goblin zeppelin in the sky, um having all kinds of issues is it's trying to escape the grasp of the storm and it's kind of pulling the Zeppelin in as well. And, um, they, you can kind of see them doing like a signal for, for help. They're, they're flashing a light kind of almost like Morse code SOS help us. Um, they're, they're close to the water because they've, they've been pulled kind of down because it's almost like, the storm is kind of making a, a new maelstrom, if you will. Yeah, we have a whirlpool. Got it. So as your, your ship gets closer, you, you, the pool gets, you kind of start moving faster and faster, and you're actually closing on that Zeppelin. You're probably, you know, maybe 50 to 100 yards away from it. And the Zeppelin, uh, they're still trying to get attention they're flagging uh they're waving all kinds of flags uh you see a goblin kind of on their deck um hoarding gold and, and trying to get into like a little like life raft thing that you know, it's not going to go well so here's the thing um and i may be loose with it, uh, some of this it, what i will try and do because immediately i am and my crew because I assume if they're my crew, they're just going to do what I want them to do, are, you know, not really afraid of said thing, kind of curious to see what's going on there. If these guys are trying to get away, whether they be goblins or not, uh, I'd rather assist with that. So see what you think about this approach as far as the WoW universe in general goes. Um, I'm going to try and communicate with some of the sea life to see if I can't get them to help the Zeppelin, like, you know, essentially attach them to it and see if I can get them to pull them away. Effectively, you know, see if I can't get the attention of, you know, a killer whale to help pull the um, okay. Zeppelin out of the toe of the... Because as far as magic goes, I can't think of anything I can do because there's not like there's, you know, a rope to cut, things like that. It, you know, something's magically pulling this in. The only thing I can think is counteract it with something bigger. Okay. And I assume, based on the Genesis rule system, that's going to be something like uh, probably conjure. Sure, that essentially work. summoning a you know not really magically summoning, but you know magically communicating with something to make it show up. Um, sure, I, I'll, I'll give you that. We'll see how this goes. We'll go ahead and because you are such a attuned druid, we'll go ahead and give you a couple two boost die. All right, sounds good to me. All right, so... Okay. Basically, um, you've communed with nature, and a kraken emerges from the water and 
envelops the Zeppelin and uh, pulls it under. Um, at that point, the single goblin that had gotten itself into the lifeboat with a hoard of gold has rowed himself as best as he could. Basically, you're moving towards him faster than he. Like, he's actually rowing, but he's going into the storm. It's the pool, and uh, you've actually caught up to him, and uh, your crew throws a rope down to him, and you can decide to allow him to board or uh, leave him to the depths with the Kraken. Yeah, sure. We'll we'll let him board. Ah, thank you, my precious gold. I I, I need it for uh, the uh, oh your your gold, Terrence. Uh, yeah, I I uh, I have no mind to to what I have in this the satchel. Uh, I'll, I'll just go in the back of the boat. And he he starts to to pedal away and kind of go hide in the hull. So. Oh. Was there anything obvious poking out of said satchel? Was it completely self-contained, or was there something peeking out that might make it obvious what this was that he's trying to hide? It was, I'm willing to toss a perception check at this if needed. No, you could you could see the glint of Azerite. Oh, God. That's not going to go well. And you're very familiar, because at this point, the war is over. The section of adventures have gone to the Shadowlands. Um, at this point, your boat has crossed almost, you're, you're almost to the event horizon of the Whirlpool. You guys, um, your, your crew is, you know, pulled in the sails, batting everything down, and, and the ship is about to, to enter that last little bit of the Whirlpool. Is there anything you'd like to do before that occurs? Uh, no, I'll just brace. All right. You brace, the boat hits it, and then all of a sudden, nothingness. Just... It's unlike anything you've ever experienced. It's just this blinding blue light and kind of lightning surrounds you guys. And then it's just darkness. You don't see anything. And it's almost as if you've fallen asleep. We're going to go now. We're going to go to Fairy. And you, ma'am, what what yes. city do your, does your character live in? Are you in Sunnydale or Sunnyvale? No idea. I didn't think about that. Hey, 20 years after the show, Sunnydale's a hole in the ground. Uh, yeah. Well, they could have rebuilt. No spoilers. Not a Hellmouth? Eh. Okay, I'm in some Hellmouth. Isn't Chicago a hell, Hellmouth? Cincinnati even... was a Hellmouth. Cincinnati. Okay. So you're. I mean, that's, you... that's real life, too. I know nothing about Cincinnati, but, you know, sure. Why not? All right. So you're in downtown Cincinnati. You are stalking a vampire. It's, he's been killing countless uh, countless children is like his MOO. He's like all about getting that, that virgin blood to... Oh, I want to kill this asshole. Okay. <laughs> so you uh, you know he's in this abandoned warehouse um, factory. Um, and you've tracked him for, for weeks and weeks and weeks. You know he's in here. Okay. So you've got Basically, this this general square warehouse and kind of a rundown part of town. Um, you've got a few obvious ways in. You've got some broken windows you can go in. Obviously, there's a, a warehouse door that slides up and down. It's kind of beaten, kind of off kilter, slightly open. Uh, a couple doors around the perimeter, and then uh, one of those roof hatches. How would you like to proceed? How oh, I'm going in the roof hatch. Okay. Go ahead and give me a quick athletics check, please. Okay. Okay. She ends up about where I did. <laughs> yes, she did. Yeah, so you... Um, I succeeded, though, didn't I? No. Mm -hmm. No, I didn't. You just oh, have shit. advantages. So... How do I not get in the house? <laughs> just hold on. So you get up on there, you open up the hatch, you were, like, feeling awesome. You were going to take out this vampire. It's been a while since you gone toe-to-toe -to -toe with one because their numbers are kind of dwindling um you get up there you open that hatch you get in no problem um you make a lot of noise doing it you were like just humming to yourself oh, like kind of dancing as you do it because you, you're in a good mood you were like gonna kill this vampire but you're kind of letting it out from you a little bit um 
But luckily, everything you knocked over kind of was on the other side of the warehouse as you went across the roof. So they're all, his minions and him are all focused on the far side of the, the warehouse. So you, you make it into the hatch and you see a figure hunched in the rafters, kind of near the hatch opening, um, kind of dressed in dark clothing, has a mask on um, off to your right. As you come down the stairs, there's like a catwalk off to the right. He's kind of hunched behind some boxes watching the tires. Uh, is he, le- how close is he to me? The la- It's probably like 20 feet, 30 feet. Maybe. He can't see me yet or he can see me yet. He seems pretty intent on the uh, vampires. Can I tell what he is? Just looks like a human. Okay. If you want, give me a perception check. So you can't discern at all what you see over there, Fairy, other than it's a humanoid. Now, Kizzo, you have noticed (laughs) out of the corner of your eye that some redheaded, flashy girl has shown up She's humming. She's kind of bopping her head, dancing as she kind of comes down the ladder, um, and she's kind of looking over at you. But your your intent, that vampire down there, has collected many souls, and you'd want all of them. Oh, great! Me and my greedy self. <laughs> well, I'm about to help you get them, so there you go. Okay, so I'm gonna, um, but well, I can see this guy. Yes. So I'm gonna That's like. Nice. Can I try to be a little more sneaky and walk up and like tap him quietly on the shoulder? Is it you've obviously noticed her? How do you want to react to her being? Can I like wave her over or something? Sure. Okay. okay, then I'll do that. All right. So you're both standing there. Um, you're star- You see the vampire. He's got like two minions with him. He's kind of seems underprepared. Um, you guys want to? What, how do you guys want to proceed? Are you here for the vampires? No, I'm just here for their souls. Okay. Yes, I'm technically there for the vampires. Okay. Do 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 we want to team up and and kill these vampires together? Um. Sure. Okay. This doesn't. This isn't going to end well, is it? <laughs> All right. How many vampires are there? There's um, one and then two minions, I think. Yeah, so two lesser vampires and one greater. Okay. All right. So as you guys, so so, what's your plan here? Do you kind of jump down and surprise them, or? I think that's that's. I that's probably the best oh. choice. Oh, can I start with a grenade? Oh. Jesus Christ! I have my <laughs> ultraviolet light. Uh, Vampire grenades. Can I start with one of those? Sure. All right. They're just like, they're close, right? Yeah, it's like a ranged light check. I mean, I failed anyways. (laughs) So you pull the grenade out of your pocket and you flip the switch and you're standing there getting ready to throw it and you just look over and you realize your finger is not on the, the the clip. And it just explodes, blinding UV light in your hand. Great. Great. At least it's uh, just light. So the lesser minions great. just vaporize. The, the big one noticed in time, and he he jumped behind some boxes. But as all this is happening, in the middle of the room, a purple, bluish light just sparks to life. This is just a little bit in front of where you guys are at. Um and lightning arcs out from it and hits you, both of you, and the vampire. And all of a sudden, you're in this bright, blinding light and then darkness. So kind of like the same place that yes. GK is at. So, sleep. Zedge. Yes. So, your bird, what, what uh, animal do you have? Oh, just uh, just a raven's fine. I mean, it's a raven, but it's, it's all birds, so yeah. Caw, I'll, caw. I'll the winter theme bird. Kakrene! There's a anomaly in the mountain! Village of Kotaku! <laughs> Due north! Caw, caw. 
Okay, I've got to tell you, the only thing I can hear when you're doing this is if you haven't ever seen, if you've ever seen The Crow, all I can think is, ka, ka, bang, fuck, I'm dead. <laughs> That's all I can think. Literally, there are birds in this anime that sound just like this. Yeah, there's a, each demon slayer has like a different bird that helps them travel to a different place. I think most of them are crows. There, are, most of them are crows, but it's Zanets who has who has that one odd the bird. Sparrow. Yeah, the sparrow. So you've got a raven. Okay. Ka ka. Kotaku. Kotaku village anomaly. Ka. And it's like you were in the vicinity. You were just kind of resting after a long battle on a train recently. At least it's nearby. All right, so you take off in the, the direction of Kotaku, and as you get there, you notice, like, the trees in the area are kind of bending towards Kotaku Village, and the it, it's dead silent. You don't hear anything. You're probably, like, 300 yards, 400 yards out from the village at this point. How would you like to proceed? Um, I'm going to try to kind of sneak into the village. Okay, the closer and closer you get, the trees are more and more bent. Like, almost at, like, 40... They were at, like, slowly bending more and more, and they're almost at, like, 90-degree angles almost at this point as you get closer and closer to the village. Like, the tops of the trees are almost pointed straight at the village. You get in there and... Like, you don't feel a pull, but just something feels off. But it's not like anything you've ever sensed before. You you sense a demon, but it's not... You also sense a lot of fear with that demon. Okay, I'm gonna... Uh, kind of... Uh, guess roll perception to see if I can pinpoint the demon. Sure. What's the difficulty on that? Just one purple. Um, that what? Oh, I didn't put it in quotes. Whoops, hang on. You gotta put it in quotes. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I'm gonna parse this out and figure out what this is. Yeah. Um, success and threat. All right, so you pinpointed the demon. He's in the dead center of town. Um, he senses you to, like, you see him poke his head out of a building and stare right at you. And he immediately darts back into the building. But as he does that, you notice the kind of the roof of the building start to like, it sinks down just a little bit. Like, and the walls on the outside of the building kind of close. Like, it's like the house is shrinking slowly. Um, do I see any people or is it just buildings and bent trees? <laughs> buildings and bent trees. There are no other people. Is the... Like, is everything kind of bending towards this one house, or is even the house bending towards some other point? It's all towards this one house. Okay, I'm going to um, draw my sword and, you know, just give chase. All right. You open the door, and as you do, the demon disappears into this almost like a rift in the wall that's just this emanating this blue light. And as and like everything in the, the house is kind of pulled towards that riff. But he as he disappears into it, he gives you this wide grin and says, I dare you to come and get me, Demon Slayer. And he disappears into the into the uh, the riff. The talker. I'm gonna kind of casually follow him in. Alright. So you also experience a br blinding bright blue light. And then darkness.